what's going on guild members uh well guild people i don't are, we don't have a collective for our own group i that's let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Uh, today we are looking at another new um, card game that's going to kickstart very shortly on the 26th of November. So by the time you're seeing this, maybe today or tomorrow, um, it should be live. And of course, we'll do a kickstart a review of it. But I have been looking at this for a while. Unfortunately, life got in the way, so I haven't been able to do as much as I wanted to about this game. It's called Astelia. Um... Which and it's kind of like a hybrid between card games in the traditional sense and board games, which you'll you'll see you'll 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 understand. There's not much information on the site per se right now, but there's going to be more added with the codex, and you can see on the side there some of the cards and what they look like. I I, I can definitely see this is not for everyone, but um, as someone who likes to look for different formats and stuff in card games, I mean obviously you've seen our commander series for Dragon Ball. Uh, this game has like four different modes built into it, which is it's, it's very interesting. Uh, so it, it's a quite an interesting proposition. So let's talk about it. Estelia card game. Welcome to Estelia uh, TCG, an expansive card game that brings together TCGs and board game styles together for a unique gaming experience. It's one to eight players. So again, that's hugely different from what you see normally. Uh, the Kickstarter will be going live shortly. Uh, there is a Discord, which is really nice, full of really nice people. The team behind it are, again, really nice people. Uh, we are working closely with them. We're going to try and help bring it to the UK, like we are with Grand Archive, like we are with Nostalgics. Akora kind of is already based here, so we don't really have to do much of that legwork. But that's what we're all about. We're all about building a community here. And you know what? This might be the perfect game for you. But if not, at least you've checked it out. So if you are new here, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And let's get into it. So the current formats, there are four different formats to play. Estelia, uh, TCG, and they are Core, Fighter, Arena Tower, and Arena Elimination. And at the moment, all these cards can be used in all formats. However, there may be cards limited to certain formats in the future. That makes sense. I'm not going to break down the rules of each mode today. But we'll look at the brief descriptions they give. So, generally, you're looking at 5 to 15 minutes for fighter and core. But it can be about 8 or 30 minutes for the arena st uh, stages. So, tower and elimination arena formats. They're, they're, they go a bit longer. And that's okay, you know. like So, you will have a variety, right? If you just got to get a quick game in with your friends. Or if you want a long drawn out, like who knows, right? Uh, I'm I'm really excited to try out the different modes myself once I got the cards in hand. I believe we are getting some sample cards, which is nice. Um, I uh, yes. Huh. So the let's break it down here. What they have here, I just saw something that said 2024. Then I was like, interesting. Um, but let's talk about it here. So core sets. Decks that will contain four copies of each card needed to play the game. Which is really handy for people just wanting to get into it. Uh, loot boxes. TCG traditional style booster boxes that will contain 24 packs, 7 cards a pack, 2 foils per pack. One foil will be mythical, legacy or epic and one random foil of any card in the set. So when we say loot boxes, it's a bad title. There's a lot of negative connotations with that. It's a booster box. That's what it is. Um, it, it's, it's unfortunate. I, I really would think about changing that name. I get why you want to be different rather than calling them booster boxes. But there's nothing wrong with just calling them booster boxes. Uh, Mythical Rarity. Mythical is an altar card that can only become in one to two. That only comes one to two in every booster box. So you can get Mythical in every box. But there's only one or two. And it's an alternate. Uh, interesting. Uh, legacy, epic, and common. Balance to ensure staples to be more accessible than being locked into a higher rarity. That's nice because sometimes you get really powerful secret rares or um, higher rarity cards, mythics and stuff. Like, granted, there should be powerful cards or very utilized cards, but it, it's nice to see that they're trying to balance that with accessibility. Really good idea. Collector's packs are all foil packs that will contain only mythical and legacy super foiled card of the current box. These will only be found within f every three to four booster cases. 
See, this is what I mean, right? Like they they uh they already use booster cases, like, but does they they, they use it? I mean, technically, right? Like booster booster packs, bo yeah. But like loot, like using the seven dollars loot box, it, it's not quite consistent. It, these are only nitpicks and minor things, and don't really matter in the grand scheme of things. But it's just something to think about in terms of cohesion and what you want to present to people. Tournament packs will only include all art, legacy, and epic cards for future sets to come. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is a huge positive. Something I've gone on for many years about. And it's something I've stressed to multiple creators of card games. Promos should never be mechanically unique. If they're going to be mechanically unique, they need to be accessible. Because if you have limited promos and they're good cards, they become very expensive. And if they're really good then you can also or you almost guaranteed to ruin your game because you'll buy people out of the game like especially if there's multiple promos in a really good deck so let's see what they've got here so uh, oh no core format there we go the core cards will be able to be played throughout of each format with the release of new cards in future arena format arena format allows for massive arena battles from defending your pylons or eliminating your opponents uh, fighters so pylons are in the tower format very interesting concept definitely give out the rule books a check hopefully they have how to play videos on their kickstarter i think that's going to be huge for four different modes you're going to want to be able to break that down and condense it to people as quickly as possible the fire format brings a unique twist to similar uh, similar to your favorite fighting games fair and infinite format so this is released mid 2022 Infinite expands your turf on a whole new level, allowing for as many fighters to be played, increased deck size, and two cards. Per t so basically, just a big more. Like, what I'm hearing here is like a, just core but more. Interesting. Um, leader format. Become the leader that will be able to support fighters on another level with, while breaking the fourth wall. Interesting. 2023 multi format supportive. Fair. At least they've got a plan for 2023. And 2024, it seems. So, Terraformer. Terraformer. <laughs> Play your fighters through the terrain that affects them by their typing and colour in this unique PvE. So, it's play versus uh, environment or enemy. Okay, that's really interesting, actually. So, that's to me, that's like um, something we did uh, similar with um, Dragon Ball, where we did boss battles. Um, that That is... That is quite intriguing. It's still far away, obviously, 2024. That's almost three years away. Um, but very interesting there. So, like, at least they've got plans for this game going forward. Uh, it is also a NFT card game, which you guys know me. I'm not a fan of NFTs as a concept in general. I'm not 100% on board with how they're implemented in today's society. Uh, I think it's a lot of promise with no... Uh, evidence to support that promise uh, as we currently aim to bring Estelia to all our local game shops you can also get NFT cards of Estelia as well through Open Seas. now Open Seas is something I do not know about I know about Engine and some others but uh, Open Seas is not one I have heard about you will be able to use your NFT copies to play within Untap or Table to Topia tournaments if you do not own physical copies of cards so can you only do right so this is this is my main concern here is it, it like untap you can just get the cards right and play but are they saying you can only do it if you have the nft of that like it's very unclear uh and if so are you then then you're kind of forcing people into nfts to play online and i don't like that but um, I, I, I could be interpreting that wrong. And I'm sure that will be clarified in the future. If possible, we are hoping to have our own mobile or PC game that will allow you to use a binder system that will be attached to your crypto wallet, allowing you for your own NFT cards digitally, which you will be able to sell, trade, just like you would your physical copies with an NFT mag. See, that makes sense. Like, that's what I understand, right? Like, that is fine. And as long as it's just, as long as you keep buying the physical product, you get an NFT version of it online, then that's cool. I don't, I mean, I have a problem with NFTs, but I don't care that much. It's when you have to be buying NFTs separately from them and it causes a whole gray area of like, then you can control the market. 
it's something that I know Grand Archive are trying to avoid and have I've, I've gone into depth with Alan, uh, the project manager, on and off screen, uh, talking about it and implementing it. And so this is an area that I, I'm cautious on. I will wait for clarification, but it's something to consider when getting into this. Uh, so 26th of November is when the Kickstarter will launch and you guys can head over to there and check it out. Obviously, if you're going by recent trends, looking at Nostalgics in Grand Icarve, both of those broke their goal within less than an hour. Well, in fact, Nostalgics hit it in 30 seconds. Um, and we, we don't really have uh, much information on that Kickstarter yet. Uh, we do have the tiers broken down um, in their Discord. And it seems very well priced. I don't know if it says anything about limits, but um, I, I honestly, it seems cheap enough for. Uh, I think you could take the risk on it. If nothing else, you have a nice experience with it. And the cards, I there's something about these cards, and I, I've talked about it back and forth with Loki, and it reminds me. And this is just me personally, of um, old school uh, comics, right? Like. There's just that edge to them. I, I, I don't know if anyone else can really understand that. Like, you look at, like, Next and Recovery, that feels like proper old X-Men style Archangel. Uh, you've got that anime-inspired thing, but it's more cartoony and done in a Western style. I think the most anime one is there is uh, Luxia. But again, it still has that comic aesthetic to me. I don't know, maybe it's just me and maybe someone can help, like, define it. But I think these are... It's a really interesting art style, if nothing else, and that's mainly why I'm collecting these, is because I like the art style. Like, I'm excited to play, don't get me wrong, but there's just something about these arts that I really, really think strikes me. I mean, look at Exile Shadow. It's probably one of the best-looking cards I've seen. Like, crazy-looking thing. There is a codex on the Kickstarter, so you can check out some of the cards, but this that'll be coming to the website as well very soon. As I said, I really wish they have a how to play for all the formats they're going to launch with on the site already. Hopefully it's there for the Kickstarter. That's the main thing I need to see from this. Because I've read the rule books and I'm going to do a video on them at some point expanding upon them more. It's because they're very strange and not what you would expect from a card game. Uh, but they want their own video. And then so the 12th uh, so the 12th is December. I got to admit, hit American dates. Uh, so the 26th for the 12th, Kickstarter completion. So this is going to finish on Boxing Day. Uh, so it's, it's relatively a short one. It's a month one. We've seen Grand Archive and Nostalgics go for the uh, the latter approach, which brings them into 2022. But, you know, nothing wrong with a short and simple campaign. January to February, Digital NFT Kickstarter awards distributed. Yeah, that's cool. Not for me personally. January to April production and shipment without fulfillment fulfillment center. When we receive, they will be shipped. And then May 2022, after product fully distributed, Coos Effects League and tournament systems information will be released. So that's roughly their first plan. It doesn't seem like on this there is anything outside of Kickstarter they plan to release. Again, this is just a rough timeline. And I'm sure more will come to light in the future. So it seems like this is very much a grassroots kind of kickstarter it's 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 going to kickstarter to believe in the game right they're generally what kickstarter is for is to back a project look at the first akora kickstarter look at this right they're very similar in terms of where i wanted to make this you guys can fund it and believe in it whereas you look at card games like uh, nostalgics and um grand archive they are pretty much fully fleshed out card games they just need the marketing to be able to fund the ice and all and the manufacturing costs. And so they go to Kickstarter for that reason. And both are valid and both are different strats. Now, this seems to me like it is more of that player versus like player mentality. There's not much screaming collectability here for me. Maybe other people are different. Um, and there are, oh, I mean, there, I say there isn't much collectability, but there are these different rarities for people to try and dive into. Uh, but I'm thinking more from the investor mindset of people trying to come in and be like, oh, I need this, this and this and this and this and this and this. And why don't you offer this? And why is it? Why aren't you limiting product and stuff like that? And so hopefully we can avoid that in this scene because it feels like it's a very pure passion project. And, and that's really cool to me. 
Uh, we are getting sent some stuff to try it out. Of course, reading the rule books one thing, playing the game is an entirely separate thing. Hopefully, um, myself and Lucky really enjoy it. If not, I got some pretty cards to look at. So this has been a quick uh, first look because there's not too much to go into. Um, but look forward to the Kickstarter. Let's hopefully uh, the Kickstarter will have a fair bit amount of information on it. But I thought I'd bring it to your attention, guys. We do have a little bit of an audience now. We have a nice little following with these new generation TCGs. And again, obviously, I want to stress we are here to build communities for card games uh, that we believe in. And this, again, as I've said, yes, there's some things I've criticised. But I believe in the people making it. I believe the passion. And to launch with four formats is super ambitious. And I'm excited to see what can come of that in the future. Guys, let me know what you think of Estelia in the comments below. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. And keep locked to Players Guild for all things new generation card games. And latest card games. And just games in general because we like games. Um, yeah, I've been Scott Seven. I'll see you next time.